Hey everyone, I'm Laura Moraski, and you're watching Build Series live in New York City. Our next guest formed in 1986 and went on to release a string of hits, including Iris, Name, and Slide. Now they're out with their 12th studio album, Miracle Pill, and are joining me here today to talk about it. Please everyone, put your hands together for John and Robbie of Goo Goo Dolls. <laughs> You? I'm great. How are you guys doing? Doing well, you know. Great. Little. Uh, this is the end of a week promo. Yeah. So you're you're ending off with on a positive note here. Here at yeah. Bill's. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. You save so. the best for last. You got a huge crowd out here. Yes. And it's the album release day too. So it that's is. really it exciting. Is. You know. And there's the album. There. <laughs> There is the album. I mean, this is their 12th studio album, like I mentioned in the intro. Uh, so it's not your first rodeo. However, it does feel really fresh, this record. Um, how do you achieve that by still sounding authentic and Goo Goo Dolls? Um, well, I mean, you just keep experimenting. Mm -hmm. Or I just keep experimenting as I go along. Mm -hmm. and I'll, you know, and um, I'll collaborate with some really interesting people that are sort of out of my wheelhouse, mm -hmm. you know, people people that create music that's that's different than what I do, and um, and I enjoy that because it's like when collaboration works, it's like one plus one equals three, and I think that that was part of like that song Miracle Pill I wrote with um, uh, Sam Hollander, who's a great songwriter, you know, um, much more much more uh, from a, a pop world than than me. I guess I don't know, but um, but he's just a fantastic songwriter. And to like to hear, you know, you come in with an idea on a guitar, and then and then you watch it build into something completely new. And like somebody brings something to the table, and you're like, I never would have thought to do that. Sure. And I I think that's what's cool about it because it's like I mean, if you paint yourself into a corner with with your formula, like I am I am John, and this is what I do, and you know, and I must keep doing this over and over again. You know, I mean, you just you just burn yourself out, and you know, you don't make good records anymore. Sure. I mean, it's interesting that you said it's someone who is more pop than you. I mean, how do you envision? I mean, I think. Do you think of yourselves as more rock, rock pop? Uh, or does it even matter? Not anymore. It doesn't. Right. It doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. What do you think? I, I think you sort of lose perspective after a while. We've just been making records a really long time, yeah. so it's just sort of the next step of the. A journey here. Yeah. Yeah. This album, Miracle Pill, it feels like there's a lot of hope in it as well. I mean, what kind of themes were you channeling when you wrote the record? I mean, I was uh, mostly me. It's uh, I've been obsessed with connection, mm -hmm. you know, um, and making real connections because it's just, you know, now it, it seems as though, not like I was intentionally trying to make these statements. Um, and it just sort of came out this way, but but you know we're just sort of living in this world where we're more and more isolated. I think we're getting more and more emotionally separated from each other, and 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 more and more emotionally sick because of it. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with with social media and and. Um, the way people are just sort of isolated by themselves in front of computers, and it's like, but I have ten thousand friends. Yes, but you've never been in a room with them, you know. And and I think that people are really, really lacking for for uh, you know real human connection. Like, I went out to dinner with someone, you yeah. know, yeah. you know things like that. Because I think because we're social beasts and pack animals, and we need to have our our groups of people that we're with and you know, and this and and the instant gratification of of um the second decade of the 20th century sure. 21st century excuse me yeah. Yeah. shit i'm old <laughs> sorry oh no i mean that's the thing with with a record like this with that social connect i mean you are you you're not very much on social media yourself no. um, so i mean why why do you want to stay away from it i mean what do you do in place of it what do I do? I, yeah. I call people. Yeah. I yeah. call people on call the telephone. People. And you know what? I, I got to tell you what, this is what I hate more than anything in the whole world. When I call someone and it goes to voicemail, Pat, and then, <laughs> and then I text them two seconds later and they answer me. Yeah. And I'm like, come on, man. Sure. 
you know. But. Well, I, I think you're de definitely channeling something here that a lot of us are feeling these days. I mean, I think we're hitting like a burnout period in some ways with the social media. Well, and yeah, and 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 we've all been living in in this chronic low grade anxiety sort of. You know, for the last twenty years, we've been traumatized from you know starting with nine eleven, then you know two wars that we're still fighting, and um, and the financial collapse, and you know uh, which was just pure wholesale thievery by by the oligarchs of this country, and um, you know I think people are getting really sick of it. I think we're on the cusp of a change, and I think that like like you know and and and. And just I'm I don't talk about politics anymore, but it just seems like nobody likes each other anymore, and I think that that's by design. I think there are people who are designing what's what's going on so that we are divided and then conquered, you know. And and you know I I know it might be I mean I don't want to overstate it, but it's it's like I'm standing in a room full of people, and I go. And I'm thinking in my head, and I'm playing I'm playing a song, and like all of a sudden, pops into my head. Theoretically, theoretically, in a vacuum, half this room voted for Trump, half this room voted for Hillary Clinton. But a hundred percent of these people are singing this song, so that may be a trivial point to start at. But it's like I truly believe that all the similarities between all of us, and the uh, you know. Um, are greater than, than the differences. And I believe that the differences are being exploited and magnified to keep us off balance, you know? Um, so music can be one tiny little venial component to the, to the solution. Sure, and I'm, I'm sure you see that at your shows, like you said. Yeah. You probably see that playing out live. The old when you're rednecks and gay guys, and you know, everybody's just singing the songs, you know, it's all good. But that's the thing. I mean, you've been together how many years now? Thirty-two. We've been seriously making yeah. making music seriously yeah. for like twenty-five. Twenty-five. 20 I was serious as hell the whole time. Yeah. Not Where me, you, John. I was screwing around. But Robbie, how does it feel for you? You know, twenty. You know, twenty-five years in. You know, or thirty years. However you want to look at it, to be still at this we kind of talked about that backstage oh, i mean it's it's amazing i mean you know it's not just our choice i'm sure most bands would love to you know say 30 years later you know that their bands are still making music and people are still interested and still coming to see them and real life didn't like march in front of them you know and and uh make them you know take responsibility and do what they yeah you know, what normal people do you know i mean so it's great but Sorry. you take responsibility in different ways. Exactly. And 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 the thing that Robbie and I did, and and you're a very successful person in your field. Yes. Excuse me. And a lot of times you put, you put, not you, but figuratively speaking, you put the real world on hold, and you make these sacrifices, and you know you pay for it. That's the way it is. You know, I mean, there there is definitely a sacrifice that you you have to be willing to make, and uh, sometimes it, it can be a little heartbreaking, mm -hmm. because you think, well, what if I had, you know, you know, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. That's the final thing. So you can't look back. You just keep going forward. And that's still driving you today. It's like, well, and also you had a you had a slow rise. I mean, you didn't just you weren't overnight success. You guys no. were putting out records before we knew your Goo Dolls' name. Yes, we were. We're just kind of programmed to do this, man. Yeah. You know, we, really. I mean, we grew up in Buffalo. It's just kind of what you do. You get a good job, and you don't screw it up, man. Yeah. You know, you do your best to, yeah. you know, to make it happen. I mean, yeah. And, you know, we had to make a lot of tough decisions, and you got to work your ass off. That's all there is to it, right? Yeah. The harder you work, the luckier you get. I think so. I mean, I've worked hard. I think that, you know, it's a testament. A lot of people are there working hard. I mean, do you think there's any luck to this? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Huge amount. Yeah. Tons. Where did you feel like you got lucky in your career? Um, I got, I think probably one of the luckiest moments was that I just happened to be in Los Angeles when, um, when uh, the music supervisor for the City of Angels movie called and um, needed a song for the film, and then I got to go see it, and then, you know, and then and then Iris came about. It was, it was pretty lucky. Yeah, 
That's that that is luck. I mean, a hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, when you're singing a song like Iris or a song like Name, I'm how many years later? Is it? Are you thinking about the same thing that that you wrote that song about today? Does it mean the same thing to you now? Say with the song yeah. Name that it did. Back yeah. Then? I mean, yeah. I mean, it's 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 really interesting because it 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 sort of takes you back to the point, and it should. That was advice that was given to me. You know, how do I how do I keep this sincere and and keep this keep the emotion in the song that I'm doing. And it's like, well, I was I was told to remember what you were, where you were, and what you were doing, and who you were, and who you were with at those times. And then it brings you right back to that moment. And, you know, it's interesting, because it's like, you know, you're reliving things. Sure. Yeah. yeah, every day. I mean, you're reminded of that time every time you probably get on stage or every yeah. time you play a song. Yeah, I mean, it's also really easy to be in the moment with that song because, you know, you're playing and, you know, it's a big reason why a lot of people are there. And so they're singing the song back to you. And it's, I don't know, it's just a big, great, I don't know, it's just a great feeling. You know, it doesn't get old for you. The room. No, man, if you lose the ability to enjoy that, then this is a really weird job to have. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's just so, uh, yeah, it's, it's it, no, it amazes me because it's like, you know, oh my God, it's such a burden to have 10,000 people <laughs> plunking down hundreds of dollars, buying t-shirts and, you know, uh, yeah. But it's a different game now, is the industry, than when you first got your start. I mean, so what's the glaring difference that you see, Robbie? That we make records and people don't buy records. Right. That's, that's the most glaring difference. But they are streaming and they are listening. Do you ever pay attention to that kind of stuff? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah because, I mean, that's, that's, what's everything, that's what everything is built on now, yeah. you know? And, and we've been lucky. I mean, we have an amazing audience, you know? We have amazing... Uh, Fans, I guess you know, and, well, and they, you know, and they they come out and they see us, you know. So well, right before you guys got on, I saw half the audience here were singing "Miracle Pill." They knew the words; it just came out today. Well, they the all know us. We know yeah. every single yeah. person. Yeah. We know a lot of people. You see a lot of familiar friends. This is, like this is our friends. extended family. <laughs> you know, super fans in the audience today. But, you know, back to the album, I, you know, you sing about so many different songs, like Money, Fame, and Fortune, for example, like you're singing about that. I mean, what what's going behind that? What are you thinking about when you're singing songs like that? I, once again, it's about making a real connection. Yeah. It's like we're we're in a fame-obsessed times, and, and people get famous for doing nothing now, you know? And it blows my mind. And, 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 and you know, I heard someone else use this term, but the K Kardashian nation... Of our, of, of pop culture, you know? It's like, what'd you get famous for? I can't say here what she got famous <laughs> for. Um, but, but um, you know, it's a thing. It, 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 and it's just, it's cheap. It's bullshit. Can I say that? Uh, yeah, we can, it's the way. Oh, it's bullshit. Yeah. You know, I mean, but, you know, God bless her. You know, I mean, she took a, she took a weird situation and, and you know, now her She's sister's, a her sister's a billionaire. You know, but, you know, at the same time, there are so many talented people who are struggling, you know. And, you know, we're just obsessed with cheap, shiny, tawdry crap because it's more fun. I don't want to think. <laughs> I don't want to think. I want to see somebody's train wreck of a life, <laughs> you know. Did fame ever get to your heads when you were when you first got started out and people were actually knowing all the names to your songs and... Ah, uh, you know, man, I mean, <laughs> the way this band came up, I, I never really felt famous ever, you know? I still don't at this moment. No, quite Aww, honestly. No, poor Robbie. No, quite honestly, I mean, I know people know He's who we are. not famous enough. I mean, I know, I know people know who we are, you know? You gotta make a sex you, Like, yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried. Then you'll get famous. Um, <laughs> it's like... People won't share it. Got 60... <laughs> 63 views. <laughs> 62 thumbs down. <laughs> Took me all day. I'm just like, God! Ah. Thumb down, thumb down, thumb down. I don't even remember what we were talking about now. We were talking about your sex tape. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whether 
fame ever got to your head, but you. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I don't, I don't think, I don't think John or I ever felt like, like, yeah. like celebrities. Quite honestly, no. You know, I mean, no. We were guys in a band. We play music. People, you know, dig the music we play. You know, and that's awesome, and we share that with them. But I, I, I don't know. I've never really yeah. felt like a celebrity here. Yeah, because that's 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 crap. Yeah. That's crap. You know what I mean? It's 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 cheap currency. You know, and it's like I, what I'm a songwriter, and that's more important than being a rock star. You know what I'm saying? Like like yes, I'm dressed dressed up like a French hipster <laughs> today. Um, You're playing the role because I'm a rock star. <laughs> Right now, <laughs> but when I walk out there, I'm a songwriter, and, I, and I'm a guy that has to go home and pay the bills and, and answer to my wife and my two-year-old, and you know, and just real life is so awesome, you know, and that part, well, when we got quote-unquote famous, that's when I started having troubles. That's when I circled the wagons. Um, deleted a ton of phone numbers, took a lot of shit from a lot of people because we had done well, you know? And and um, uh, and it was almost like I had done something wrong, you know? And I'm like, I all I did was work my ass off and got lucky, and you're going to give me shit for that? Forget it. And then, you know, and then... Um, and then the idea of not... Of having it taken away from you. I mean, really, generally, there's two things in life that we're all afraid of. We're afraid we're not going to get what we want, and then when you once you get what you want, you're afraid someone's going to take it away from you. So, so I was dealing with both of those things. I was dealing with both of those issues, and and um, you know, it took a long time to get out of it. But when you you know, um, we got some good advice from our manager. You know, he was like, "Keep your heads down and keep working." You know, and and um, things things got real intense. You know, but uh, you know, but we we um, we got through it. We stuck together, which surprises me. I'm surprised Pat, our manager, stuck with us. You know, because I was an asshole to him, pretty much. True friends. I mean, true. I mean, he see you must. No, I think have he still thought he was going to make money off me. Yeah. So. <laughs> No, I kid, I kid. No, I mean, we're pretty rare, man. Yeah. We've been dealing with the same people in our organization for for a really long time. And like, yeah. you don't see that much yeah. in this, was, in this was, line of work. It's weird, though, because, you know, it's like, as it went on, the shine wears off of all that nonsense, and you're just happy to be working, you know? And, and, and in a sense, you grow up. Sure. And growing up, I mean, now you have a daughter, two-year-old. Um, well, how's yep. that much has that changed you? Me? I've just got another woman yelling at me all the time now. <laughs> the wife and the kid. I see. No, my wife yells at me less than my daughter, but uh, my daughter is at that age. She's just like, no. I go, Lily, are you angry with me? And she's like, nope. And she well, turns around, and I'm like, my God, it's genetic. <laughs> They're all wired like this. Oh, man. Well, you just got off the road with Train, and now you're going on a headlining tour yourself this fall. I mean, what, you know, 12 albums in, what can we expect? How do you come up with a set list? Do you change it up every night, and how do you keep it fresh? Well, this time we actually sat down at breakfast with our manager, Pat, over there, <laughs> and uh, wrestled our way through our catalog, which is becoming unbelievably <laughs> difficult. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. There's only so much time in every night, so, but, uh, you know, we kind of honed it down. We got some the great new stuff yeah we're playing this fall and a couple deeper tracks and it was just yeah we had to involve management in the meeting of how to make a set list because it's like brokering a middle east peace deal <laughs> you know because we're just like constantly fighting about what song should be in the set and not it's and just getting so hard now we got so many songs you know and you're trying to narrow it down to 20 songs and it's it's you know i mean First world problem for sure. Sure. You know, but uptown. Like, yeah, but problem. you know, I mean, it. You, you know, it gets more and more difficult every time we put a record out. To, you know, I mean, it was hard eight years ago to put a set list together. You know, it's you know, it's really hard now. I love seeing the connection between the two of you. I mean, we only have a minute left of my time before we get to audience questions. But you know, what's it? What's it like supporting each other all these years? And you know, when does it get easy? When is it hard? <laughs> <laughs> it seems easy at this moment. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, you're having a good time so, on stage, so right? That's yeah. good. No, I mean, you know, it's 
you know, man, it's like, you know, we've been together for, you know, way longer than half our lives, you know. So, um, you know, there's ups and there's downs. and But, you know, we're here and, you know. I mean, you know, you have to live your own life. Yeah. Away you know, I mean, from this. A, I think that's important, you know, after doing this together for so long is to be able to, you know, have a little something you can call your own. But, you know, still know that this is the thing you're here to do every day. Yeah. Well, I think that's a great way to end our portion, but we have a bunch of audience questions because, of course, you have your super fans here. Yes. So let's get take it away. Who's first? Right here. Hi. Thank you so much Hello. for today. Hi. Thank you. So I have a question. Um, the song All That You Are, such a deep and meaningful song to so many people, and I was wondering why you don't play it at your shows. Pat. Maybe oh, wow. You can discuss that with Pat. <laughs> that, that did come up for breakfast the other day, actually. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we thought about that. Um... I think it was because, I think it's mostly because it, it was in the same time signature that Iris was written in. So I kind of wanted to avoid that. I didn't want to repeat myself because it was, a, it was like, it was a really good song. But to me, in, in, in retrospect, it seemed like, ah, uh, you're repeating yourself again. Like you're trying to rewrite Iris. And it's like, pfft, not going to happen. Not going to happen. So, okay. All right, who's next? So at the heart of Goo Goo Dolls is music. And I'm sorry, could you speak up? Sorry. A little? At the heart of Goo Goo Dolls is music and friendship. How, over the course of your entire career, have you been able to produ pr produce and preserve both great music and great friendship? What keeps you grounded? I mean, we haven't. No, we, okay, what keeps us grounded? But um, uh, the first part of your question is sort of like we haven't always produced good, great music and we haven't always been friends. So it, it comes. <laughs> <coughs> No, really. I mean, I mean, that's just the way it is. It's like, you know, sometimes I don't I don't want to talk to him, you know, and he feels the same way about me because but like I, said, I call him and he puts me on the voicemail and then he t I text him and he answers me. <laughs> but at uh, least I text you back. But but I like to prefer the oh, I didn't see that. I don't know. <laughs> I was in a tunnel. Um, but but, um, you know, you just learn to recognize and then respect each other's boundaries you know and clearly define everyone's role is clearly defined you know so so that's incredibly important it's like you know it's like in any sort of family or business or whatever you know i mean everybody's role has to be clearly defined and everybody needs to do what they do the best that they do and um and it'll be it'll all be okay, you know. All right. Thanks for that question. Who's next? Hello. Which, hi. Hi. Which artist inspired you to become a singer? Me. Both of you. Uh, Him. Robbie. Both he inspired me. <laughs> He's like, I can't listen to this guy anymore. I got to start singing. Yeah. <laughs> that was probably the inspiration. No, really. I mean, no one, in, no one, no one in particular. It was just I got. I, we we were recording our second album, and I got drunk enough to get up in front of a microphone, as though I was at some karaoke bar, and uh, I started singing. And then there you go. I I firmly believe that everyone just wants to be Mick Jagger. <laughs> That's it. Even Mick Jagger, <laughs> especially Mick Jagger, Mick, Mick, Jagger. Mick Jagger. We'll take it. All right, we have time for one more question. Hi. Hello. So, on the album, you spoke a bit about working with different songwriters and collaborators. How did you achieve such a cohesive tone in the record? I think that, okay, the cohesive tone. Okay, you have one guy mix the record, and he, he finds the common threads, as well as as soon as I start playing guitar and he starts playing the bass and then my voice comes in, it's really evident that it's us. So, you know, it's like, it's really difficult for us. Like, I'm not talented enough to pretend to be someone else. Like, so, so those are the threads, I think, you know. No affectations were affected enough yeah. on our own. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't really, like, everybody has an affectation in their voice. And I don't, I, I don't know. I just open my, I just want to keep my voice. I'm just, I'm just trying not to lose it. You know, but uh, but yeah, you know, I, I mean, I think those are the things that once once we put our stamp on it, 
then then it could be anything, you know. But it's still going to be recognized as us. Well, the result here is Miracle Pill, and it's uh, and it's uh, out now. And the, look at it. <laughs> you can catch. It still Goo smells fresh. Uh, you can get the album. You can catch Goo Goo Dolls on tour this fall. Uh, so give it up one more time for Goo Goo Dolls, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you.